What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Today on the show, we're going to be joined by Sonny Ship with Go 24-7, also Danny West and Curtis Wilkerson. Danny's going to go into some recruiting stuff. We're also going to talk about the LSU game, obviously. And Curtis is also going to talk a little bit of basketball stuff going on. Obviously, there's some big news with the NBA draft and free agent signees. So we'll get into all that. But mainly, this is your Arkansas versus LSU primer. Everybody knows who to follow and what to like and all that kind of stuff. But today I wanted to go over something, a special offer that we're offering. It's today is the last day we're doing it. Uh, it's a 50% off deal. Right now you can sign up at hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports for 50% off. And you can also, if you're a monthly subscriber, this is for an annual subscription, if you're a monthly subscriber, you can, you can flip over to an annual uh, membership for 50% off. So it is upgradable. And the good news is if you're a monthly subscriber, you're paying a regular price, you're not on any other promo, and you're getting CBS All Access for free, CBS All Access, commercial free, uh, a great deal, $99 annual value for as long as you're subscribed to hogsports.com and not on any other promo. But if you're paying regular and you're on a monthly subscription, you can upgrade to an annual and keep your CBS All Access. That's not the case if you're upgrade if you're signing up for the first time, but for those who are trying to upgrade and you're on a monthly subscription, now's a great time to do it. Fifty percent off, and you can keep your CBS All Access. For those of you who are interested, it breaks down to just fifteen cents a day. You can't buy a gumball for fifteen cents. A dollar three a week, four forty eight a month, and build at just fifty three dollars and seventy cents for the entire year. Hell of a deal. You want to sign up for it. People ask all the time, how can you support the channel? How can you support this? Get something great out of it. Sign up for hogsports.com. You won't be disappointed. As I mentioned, we're going to be joined by Sonny Ship, the uh, senior writer for Go247, G-E-A-U-X-247. If you're an LSU fan, they're also offering the same deal. First of all, congratulations to uh, Isaiah Joe, former Razorback guard, who was drafted by the 76ers last night, and then Mason Jones, who just signed a free agent deal with the Houston Rockets. Good luck to both of those guys, obviously. Arkansas anxious to win the boot back from LSU. This is a series that the last four years has been in LSU's favor. The all-time series is 44, or excuse me, 41-22 and 2 in favor of LSU. They've won the last four, including 56 to 20 last year in Baton Rouge, a game that just was never close. Arkansas almost got them in 2018, 24-17, senior day. It's a little bit misleading because LSU was like right inside the five-yard line, could have punched it in there at the end. So it wasn't like they were in danger of losing that game. 33-10 in 2017 and 38-10 in 2016. The last time Arkansas beat these guys was 31-14. I was at the game in Baton Rouge in, at night. And the chance of rain is never. LSU's got one of the best intros, <laughs> especially for a night game in Death Valley. But this one's in Fayetteville. When you look at the Arkansas roster, there are nine players from the state of Louisiana on the roster, eight scholarship players. Four of them are defensive backs, two linebackers, one wide receiver, Devion Warren. Unfortunately for Devion, uh, he tore his ACL and is out for the season. He's a senior. Hopefully he can return next year, though. He can return if he chooses to. And one offensive lineman, Dylan Rathke. That's Nick Turner, Joe Fouché, Greg Brooks Jr., Devion Warren, Devin Bush, Andrew Parker, Dylan Rathke, Kellen Burrell, and then deep snapper Eli Chisholm. Those are the players from Louisiana. That's a lot of defensive backs from Louisiana. I really think that played a role back in the 2015 game because Arkansas had a lot of Louisiana flavor on that team. Alex Collins broke off that big run right off the right off the bat. Sam Pittman's back in the office, obviously, as of Wednesday. He says, me personally, I'm good. I feel good. I'm glad to be back to back back to work. We've had some positives this week that certainly will impact our football team. You never like to hear that. Now, people have been freaking out a little bit about this, and maybe they have the right to. I can remember when 
uh, Lane Kiffin when Arkansas was scheduled to play Ole Miss and people were like, is this game going to be canceled? Because Lane Kiffin's talking like outbreak on their team. I think they ended up having two players miss the game. I don't know if that's the case with Arkansas, but per numbers, as he says, mandated by the SEC, we are still within that number ratio. So we're looking forward to playing. We have the adequate number of people to play. Now, that doesn't mean like the 50, what is it, 56, I think, 56 players you have to have. Uh, but it can also factor in like you don't have enough quarterbacks, you don't have enough running backs, defensive linemen, anything like that um, can cause you to have to miss. I think that probably more people have missed playing football this season, probably due to contact tracing and quarantining than actual people who have the case. Now, as I understand, we're talking on drive time, like if you test positive and then you take three more tests that week and all those tests each in consecutive days, you can do it. Uh, Pittman tried to do it that way, but he he hit a positive on the second one. But if you do that, then you can play. But if you come into contact with somebody who has it and you test negative three times, then you still can't play. I guess that's how it works. It's a lot of – I mean, it's a difficult situation to navigate. So, on Sunday, the players were off. So, Pittman, you know, was doing his remote, met with the defense at 1, met with the offense at 145, 230 special teams, 3 o'clock meet with the team, and then they scatter and, and start game planning. Um, they shortened Monday up a little bit because they didn't have a whole lot of correctable errors. And I appreciate Sam Pittman for saying this, but he's just like, Florida's just really, really good. We didn't have a whole lot of correctable errors. Now, they still have things they want to work on, obviously. They put a big focus this week on third down, both getting off the field on third down, third and eight and longer, and uh, and converting third downs on offense, because that was obviously an issue uh, last weekend, especially on defense. Tuesday's a work day, Wednesday back in the office. That's kind of the schedule that he's he's put together. You know, I look at this team for LSU, and I think a, a lot of people. First of all, Arkansas started out out as a favor a favorite, and last year they were like forty five point underdogs. I mean, just huge underdogs. And the week started out with them favored by one and a half. I think they're down to last check. It was like LSU favored by two. I love what Pittman said about this also that this team, you know, is super talented. So you don't want to overestimate or, excuse me, underestimate a team like that. And you just look through the roster, you know, left to right, left tackle, Cameron Wire, you know, not a super highly regarded guy, uh, but a three-star, high-end three-star, but also, you know, Alabama, Auburn, plenty of other SEC schools were after him. Uh, Ed Ingram, left guard, four-star recruit, Big time recruit. Uh, Liam Shanahan was actually a transfer from Harvard. That was an easy decision to transfer from Harvard. They're not even playing football this year. But he's the starting center. And then at right guard, you've got Chasen Hines, who is, again, a four star recruit, big time offer list. Big kid. Like he's like 345. Austin Deculus. Now he's actually one of the few guys who returns. Uh, from a starting role, he has 24 starts under his belt. So he's a well-regarded guy. Um, you know, and you, you know, talk about these other guys like not having played a lot. Hines was a backup to an All-America, Lloyd Cushenberry, last year, you know. So, and I believe one other guy on the offensive line, yeah, Ed Ingram, started 12 games as a true freshman in 2017, sat out 2018. So he's a guy that also has starting experience, although it wasn't very recently. So, I mean, and it kind of goes like that all the way through. You know, you look at their running backs. LSU isn't producing a ton of rushing yards this season. And that's surprising, I guess, because John Emery, if you remember him from recruiting, class of 2019, was a five-star recruit at running back, the number two Running back recruit in the nation on the composite 24-7 sports actually had him the number one running back in the country. And then you look at Tyrion Davis-Price, also out of the 2019 class, four-star. Number eight ranked running back in the country. Those are the kind of players that you'd expect LSU to be bringing in. You know what? You want to keep talking about the weapons that these guys have. Terrace Marshall, 2018 class, 
their go-to wide receiver, big kid, big, tall, lanky wide receiver, five-star, number 13 overall recruit in the nation in 2018. Eric Gilbert, tight end. They lost the Moss kid. Now they bring this guy in in 2020, number one tight end recruit in the country, number five player nationally, five-star. They get you worried at all? I mean, we see some of the scores that LSU has given up, you know, how bad they lost to Auburn. They hadn't played in three weeks, and it looks like, you know, all everything's aligning. But, man, you start looking at these recruit rankings for these guys. The other receivers, for the most part, aren't, like, as highly rated. And you look at the two quarterbacks. You got T.J. Finley, big kid. 6'6", 250, going to look like Jamarcus Russell out there, I guess. A three-star recruit, but, you know, had some had some good offers, obviously. Alabama, Auburn wanted him. Max Johnson, they got him out of Georgia also in the 2020 class. He was a four-star recruit, number 253-ranked player in the country. Both those guys have played this year. Obviously, they're out without Miles Brennan. Miles Brennan has some kind of abdominal something, so he's out for the year. But T.J. Finley's 30 of 45 for 408 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Max Johnson's 15 of 24, 172 yards and a touchdown. So that's I think that's kind of the area where you're like, okay, here's Arkansas's chance to break the four-game losing streak to LSU, win the boot back because of the quarterback situation, right? They certainly have a lot of talent. And they, may be, they may be younger. It may be young talent, but, you know, you're getting through the year where you start saying freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. Anyway, we'll go over some more stuff. Uh, we'll flip it over to the defense um, soon, which I want to talk to Curtis Wilkerson because he's kind of diving in de- more to the defense. But I think one of the more intriguing matchups for Saturday is Derek Stingley versus Traylon Burks, which I would have Stingley on Burks the whole time. For those who are not familiar with Stingley, also in the class of 2019, ranked number three recruit nationally. I mean, just like All-American type stuff, you know, just one SEC Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, a fantastic, fantastic cornerback. But they're giving up a ton of receiving yards. Let me go over this real quick with you guys. So this is the LSU scoring. Let's see. Let's go, let's go to defense. LSU scoring defense is allowing 33.6 points a game, 143.4 Yards a game rushing. Pass defense, 335.2 yards per game. I mean, and it's not just Stingley. You look at Todd Harris, four-star. Jacoby Stevens, five-star. Leader back there. And then you got guys like Eli Ricks, who's a true freshman, has three interceptions, also a five-star. I mean, these guys are not suddenly without talent. It's not like they haven't been recruiting at a national championship level. Repeated top ten recruiting class. Sometimes it's high. I think they've been as high as number two. So we'll get back to some more stuff on defense with Curtis when we join him. But I want to get to my man Sonny Ship over at Go 24-7. Where you at, Sonny? Again, they're also running a 50% off deal. Ends tonight at 10.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hello. Hey, Sonny. How you doing, man? I was just talking to our listeners and, and viewers about this uh, this matchup coming up Saturday between Arkansas and LSU, and, uh, and you're the guy to go to to answer all our questions about the Tigers. Yeah, man. How's it going over there? It's going good. getting some good weather? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be like 66. I hadn't checked in a couple of days, but we're supposed to have nice weather on Saturday. It feels like we're going to have a good a game. I know that's good. Billy Embody was texting me the other day because he, you know, heard Sam Pittman saying something about, uh, you know, COVID cases and stuff. And he, he told me he just couldn't, he couldn't take it. <laughs> he couldn't take not having another game. I imagine you probably feel that way too, because it'll be basically three weeks uh, without a game for LSU. 
Yeah, and the worst part is it's been three weeks since uh, since a curb stomping and the worst mm-hmm. loss yeah. in over twenty years. <laughs> yeah, if you're coming off, a, if you got a three week layoff, you want to come off a win. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how we, how are things with uh, with COVID situation? I'm sure I doubt you have like uh, intimate knowledge of you know who has what and stuff, but uh, I'm sure you can update us on the injury situation a little bit. And uh, with that time off, I'm, you know, get some time to heal some guys up. Yeah, the three weeks off, you know, um, LSU, and, and to start with, you know, LSU entered the season with scholarship, with a scholarship roster barely above yeah. 70. And, uh, you know, they, they, they gave out, I want to say, three, three scholarships to walk-ons because they had so much space right there. So they didn't have very much margin for error as far as injuries go. And in every game this year so far, they've had at least two starters out uh, and two key starters too. You know, when you only return three from, from last year, every one of them is key. And, uh, you know, so that has been something that, uh, that, that has really stung LSU. But going into this one, They'll be as healthy as they have been all year, of course, minus the uh, you know minus the injury to Miles Brennan, mm-hmm. and uh, you know as far as the uh, as far as the the COVID quarantines and everything like that, they should be in uh, in very good shape uh, heading into Saturday. So so that's one of the uh, you know that that's in, in breaking down this game and looking at it where some you know who has some edges and things like that. That may be you know that that's one of the I guess you know, one of the few edges I can look at and say that, you know, that LSU definitely has a, uh, has a leg up on the Hawks going into Saturday. Sonny Ship joining us, senior writer for Go 24-7. That's G-E-A-U-X. Also, as I mentioned, offering a 50% off deal that ends tonight at 10.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're an LSU fan watching, be sure to go sign up there. Also upgradable for you monthly members. Um, so what can you tell us about T.J. Finley? Max Johnson is another guy that we could possibly see um, with Miles Brennan being out for the season. I guess he's out for the season with the abdominal issue. Yeah, I, you know, they haven't ruled him out for the season, uh, you know, barring a miraculous recovery. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with, with everything with everything that's taking place and stuff uh, and, and the type of injury that he has, you know, rest rest is the only thing that's going to let that thing heal. So I'll, I'll be very surprised if he does come back this year. But TJ Finley, I mean, you could you couldn't get off to a better start. You know, this kid goes out against South Carolina, hits seventeen to twenty one passes, two hundred sixty five yards, throws two touchdowns, runs for one. As I've been watching him since he was a freshman over at St. Thomas Aquinas and Hammond before he transferred over to Ponchatoula High School. And, you know, that's the best game that I have – that's the best I have ever seen him play in any game. You know, you can go back to seven-on-seven seven tournaments. You can go back to anything. And, I mean, he just played – he played absolutely lights out. So was that a sign of uh, – was that a sign of the progress that he had made? Or was that, uh, you know, just an exceptional coming-out party? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we saw against Auburn that that was an exceptional coming out party. Um, you know, he didn't get the help against Auburn that he got against South Carolina, didn't have a running game. The offensive line got destroyed uh, by Auburn's defensive front. And what you saw was a true freshman who turned the ball over three times in a little bit more than a, you know, in, in basically a half of football. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, if LSU can get, if LSU can get, Somewhere in between, you know, somewhere in between South Carolina and Auburn and Finley can get, you know, Finley gets help. He gets times to throw. LSU has a running game that keeps the Arkansas offense off the field some. Then I think LSU has a chance to be in this one, uh, you know, going into the fourth quarter. But for me, that's the key is that Finley has to give them a lot more than he gave against Auburn. But it doesn't have to be except what you saw against South Carolina. Now, if he does it, if he doesn't play a lot better than he did against Auburn, I think he'll have a pretty quick hook uh, to go to Max Johnson because Max Johnson got his first his first, um, you know, we can call them legitimate snaps in the SEC played almost a half against Auburn. And so he got his feet wet and, and, and you know, he, he, he showed some athleticism 
he runs the ball well. He com- you know, he he completed. I want to say I want to say he completed right a, a little bit above sixty percent of his passes. So he played he played pretty well for a debut. But um, you know, that's going that that's a big key going into this one. And you know, you you can attest to this that you know the the quarterback play how important it is because Arkansas is really getting an exceptional quarterback play out of Felipe Franks. They really are. It's been a big difference for Arkansas having Franks and his leadership, and in addition to a, cha- a, a staff change <laughs> that was that was definitely needed. So, you know, you, you think about it, it's almost like LSU got hit with sanctions for having so few scholarship players this year. You know, that's like that's like sanctions number. So, I guess if they have a bunch of seniors that are wanting to come back, that's not going to be an issue with uh, with getting under the the eighty five cap, if that's indeed what the cap ends up being. How do you see this one playing out on Saturday? It's in Fayetteville. Obviously, LSU's has some issues at quarterback um, with not having Brennan and having younger guys. Although, you know, there's a lot of promise there. But again, I was going through LSU's roster, and it's just four star, four star, five star. So, how do you see this game playing out? And I want to ask you about a key matchup with Derek Stingley and Traylon Burks. Also, do you think that is is you know is that a situation where you say, hey, Stingley cover Burks the whole time, or how how do you see that working out? Yeah, and excuse me, LSU hasn't LSU hasn't really uh, lined Stingley up and said, okay, you follow this guy mm-hmm. everywhere everywhere he goes. It's more or less of uh, you know where he lines up. But you know when we talk about players who uh, you know, and specifically on the defensive side of the ball, players who have just not played like they did last year. You know, Derek Stingley's another one. I mean, you're talking about a kid who was he, he was he was one accolade shy of being a uh, unanimous All American as a freshman. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just the, he, he was everybody's first team All American cornerback entering the season. Obviously, he missed the opener against Mississippi State, but he hasn't he, he hasn't uh, he hasn't looked like he did last year either. And that I mean, you could say that for everybody on LSU's defense. Is it scheme? Is it uh, is is it uh, not familiar with Bo Pelini's system? Um, you know, uh, everybody's got their uh, everybody's got their reasons and their excuses for it. For whatever reason, it just seems like LSU's players on the defensive side of the ball that they just do not mesh well with. Bo Pelini and his system. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it's kind of mind-boggling there. Well, when it's, you look, it's when surprising you look at it. when you look at the pass defense and you look at how highly rated these guys were, uh, and especially, you know, compared to to I mean, last year they were they were fairly I guess middle of the pack, but they could afford to do that because they were so explosive on offense. But LSU this year is last in yards per game given up, and I believe they're last in pass efficiency defense also. And, and Trey, if you go back and if you went through LSU's first five games, and if you counted, you know, if you just put highlights together of all of the plays, not that the not that the opponents just hit them on for big plays, but that they hit them on to where there was no LSU defender within fifteen or twenty yards, mm-hmm. you would have a two minute clip. Wow. <laughs> after five games, I mean, that gives you an indication right there. Now, look, I give. Um, I give KJ Costello all the credit in the world. You know, threw for 623 yards against him in the opener. He was really dropping passes that uh, you know where LSU was actually covering the receivers pretty well um, in a, in a lot of instances. And so, but outside of that, man, they have just been uh, there has just been coverage bust after coverage bust. And to have a coverage bust is one thing, but when you have guys on the field who start pointing fingers at one another, who start you know accusing this one of making the bus and this one saying no it was your fault and you're you know and, and you can see the animation on tv to me that's a problem right mm-hmm. there that's a problem because you've got guys who they're definitely not uh one heart one team one heartbeat like they were last year you know the mantra that ed orgeron had for that team last year i mean it, it's complete opposite this year so you know that that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a big key right there. Is can LSU clean up some of the miscommunication? Can they clean up some of the coverage bust? Obviously, without knowing who's out for Arkansas with COVID, um, you know it, it, it's tough to look at and it's tough to say. Okay, how does LSU and Arkansas stack up on Saturday? You know, I, I'm going to look at it from the standpoint of uh, you know just 
head for head, you know, we know who's out with injuries. We, you know, we know who most of the players are out with injuries and just assume that everyone else is going to play and then we'll have to see on Saturday. But I think LSU, I think the biggest key for them is that they have got to establish a running game. They've got to establish a running game. If they establish a running game, that means that the offensive line has come out and that they're playing physical. That means that they're going to punch Arkansas in the mouth early to see how Arkansas responds. And if they do that, if they can build some momentum, if they can get some consistency going, then I think this is a game that can go into the fourth quarter. Um, You know, unfortunately – Looking at what has happened in the past, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to to have much confidence in these four and five star defensive backs, uh, just based on their recruiting ranking ranking because we've got five games to go off of of how they played this year, and so you know it, it's tough for me to all of a sudden assume that over this three week layoff that they cleared up the issues with the communication issues on defense when you, you know, when, when one of the reasons that you had to postpone the Alabama game is you did, you didn't have any scholarship safeties available to play, you know? So how much of those communication errors can you clear up when you don't have a lot of your team together? And, uh, you know, so, so for me, that's how I see it going. You know, I really haven't nailed down a score on it yet, but I think you're looking at a game where it probably gets into the thirties for both teams, but I just question whether or not LSU's defense can play even semi-sound football for four quarters and in that fourth quarter you know I, I just get the feeling that uh that the, the issues that you've seen from uh you know all season are going to rear their ugly head and you'll have guys start pointing fingers at one another again and then you'll just see it kind of go downhill a little bit and that uh and that Arkansas probably pulls this one out all right Sonny well, I appreciate you joining us, and uh, great stuff as always. And uh, I guess uh, we'll we'll be looking for your coverage also on Saturday. Hey, and I hope I'm wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need another board meltdown on uh, Saturday. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> been there too much, brother. unfortunately. All right, man. Talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> That's Sonny Shep again. Sonny does a great job over there. Um, with the uh, Go Tiger side, him, Shay Dixon, Billy Embody, uh, a great team over there at Go Tigers, or excuse me, Go 247. All right. And that was not a roofer. He was not an electrician. He wasn't a dentist. He was an actual real life sports writer. So we nailed it this time. I made sure to enter the proper number so I wouldn't make that mistake again. <laughs> All right. We're going to hop over to Curtis Wilkerson. Curtis is our. Main basketball writer, and, I mean, cranks out a ton of football content as well. Does a great job. We're going to talk to him a little bit about the NBA draft that just happened last night and a little bit more about this game coming up. Hey, Trey. Hey, Curtis. How you doing, man? I'm doing really good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So, Curtis, I wanted to, before we get into any football stuff, this is the Arkansas versus LSU primer, but some big news with uh, NBA draft and also with free agency as it pertains to, to former Hogs. Yeah, definitely. You know, last night everybody was kind of waiting and waiting and waiting to see what was going to happen with Isaiah Joe and Mason Jones. Um, Isaiah got selected number 49 overall in the in the second round to the Philadelphia 76ers, and uh, you know, we had been hearing some rumblings the last couple of days that maybe he had a promise from Philly. And, right. you know, the, the thing the thing about that was they had like five or six picks. So you didn't know when it was going to happen. But they did uh, hold up their end of the bargain, I guess, took him at 49. And if you look at it, that's just really a great fit for Isaiah Joe's skill set. I mean, Philly is a team that, you know, made the playoffs. They're kind of looking to, to take the next step. Uh got rid of their coach and brought in Doc Rivers, who's one of the great voices, uh, you know, as far as NBA coaches go. So really a great situation for him to develop under. And it's a team that really struggled with perimeter shooting. I, I mean, I, I can't think of too many guys who can do it better uh, in that draft class than Isaiah Joe. Now they did make some moves and uh, brought in some guys via trade and things like that who are going to help in that department. But he certainly fills an area of need for Philadelphia. So, Really excited for him, and then you know, unfortunately, Mason Jones wasn't selected uh, in the in the sixty round or the sixty pick draft. But shortly thereafter, you know, rumblings started coming out that he was going to sign a two way contract with the Houston Rockets. So, uh, looks like that's going to come to fruition. And you know, the two way contract 
it's kind of a split appointment between the NBA G League, which is essentially their minor league system, uh, and playing with the big club. And usually there's a limit on you know how many days you can be up with the NBA team and things like that. They've loosened it up a little bit this year just because with you know everything going on with COVID, you don't even know if the G League is going to play. So mm-hmm. uh, that's good for him in the sense of he can play in up to 50 games uh, with the Rockets, which is more than he would have been able to do normally. Um, and it sets the salary. Uh, you know, in the past, it was it was kind of weird. Uh, you basically got compensated on a day-to-day basis based on are you in the G League, are you in the NBA. Now they have a set salary. If I saw right, I think it's like 455000 flat rate. That, that's a pretty good start mm-hmm. for anybody. Yeah. I'd, I'd take that. So, you know, good for him. Obviously, there's a lot of turmoil in that Houston program, you know, kind of going through a coaching change. They don't know if they want to scrap the thing and rebuild. You know, you've been hearing rumors that James Harden wants out, maybe Russell Westbrook wants out. Uh, So either he's going to be able to learn from some of the best scorers in the game right now, or uh, they're going to be gone and he might find a bigger role than he anticipated right away. So good stuff for both of those guys. Happy to see them moving on. Yeah. I think it kind of played out pretty much like people were expecting you know, as soon as they declared, you know, Mason wasn't showing up on a whole lot of draft boards and Joe was kind of, you know, he'd probably be a second rounder kind of deal. Um, so switching gears on you a little bit, we were, I was just talking with Sonny Ship over at Go247 and, you know, he was kind of pointing to something that I kind of noticed too, just with body language with, with LSU, you know, they've got all these really highly regarded defensive backs and really all across the defense, you know, I mean, there's, you know, a former walk on or something here and there, you know, like everybody's got, but really just overall an incredibly highly recruited class. Uh, but they're giving up a ton of passing yards this year. And, you know, he kind of said, you know, you see players looking at each other with their hands up, you know, or pointing fingers and stuff like that. That's not that's not good body language that you want to have right now. And he kind of questioned, you know, maybe they're not meshing very well with Bo Pelini. What are you seeing out of uh, – we always – for those who don't know, we always kind of switch roles a little bit with our focus more on – uh, the opposing team's offense, and Curtis has been focusing more on the defense. So, what do you what are you seeing out of the LSU defense? Yeah, you know, I, I thought that was a great call with Sonny. I mean, he he nailed it. As as I watch, you know, usually before I go back and watch some of this game film, I do exactly what you do. I go back and look at the players and their recruiting rankings mm-hmm. and what they've done in the past and things like that. And you know, doing that first glance and just you know having the the baseline of knowledge of what LSU's been doing defensively this year. Uh, it just didn't make sense. So I was really interested to see what was going on. Uh, and I agree, you know, you, you do, you see that uh, with the body language. And, uh, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about it before with, with Arkansas, you know, in the past couple years where, uh, you know, maybe a couple guys could get on a tackle and it's like, oh, no, no, you got it. It's fine. Yep. You know, instead of flying to the ball and you see some of that, you do see some of the finger pointing. And as Sonny pointed out, uh, just some re- ridiculously blown coverages and it, it does seem like they're having a little bit of trouble uh you know maybe meshing gaining some chemistry or just figuring out those Bo, uh, Bo Pelini schemes defensively and we had Ed Orgeron on the the SEC teleconference yesterday and he talked to that I mean he said hey you know defensively we're trying to fix some of these problem areas we're really trying to simplify things and just work on executing our assignments so it sounds like maybe they're going to try to you know dumb it down a little bit to the basics oh and just that's a bad can... that's bad you never that's want bad. To, yeah you never want to hear a coach say it. once once the coach says <laughs> once the coach says we're simplifying things oh those were his words <laughs> then that's it once, yeah, you, once so, you say you're simplifying things it's like the that's like your athletic director going we have full confidence in the head coach Oh yeah, that's that's the dreaded vote of confidence. You're right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I said I've said this so many times though. Last year, Curtis, uh, and this year, it's not just about the Jimmys and the Joes. It's also about the X's and the O's. And I think this mm-hmm. is a this is a prime example. Now LSU's dealing with some other stuff. I mean, in the seventy, like Sonny said, they're like around seventy scholarship players. That's like NCAA sanctions level. Um, right. Due to having so many guys, you know, declaring for the NFL, um, some guys opting out and stuff like that, they they've had a lot of stuff like that. So, but it is almost like, you know, this is what happens when you're on NCAA sanctions. Your your scholarships are cut that much. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. You know, they're already kind of working with, you know, not a full deck there, and then you know, dealing with the the COVID issues and things that they've had. 
over the past few weeks, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to evaluate. You know, it's mm. going to be 21 days since they last played. So on one hand, you're thinking, okay, well, they're probably fresh. They've had plenty of time to clean some things up. But, you know, like Sonny alluded to, a lot of those guys have been in quarantine. So any workouts they've been doing uh, up until, I think, Tuesday when they got a lot of guys back have been individual, and they haven't been at practice. So mm. maybe you're, you know, zooming in and, and looking at some things on film. But as far as going out – and sharpening up that execution, I don't, I don't know how much of that they've been able to get. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of LSU team we see on Saturday. All right, Kurt, appreciate you, brother. Yep, anytime. All right, that's Curtis Wilkerson again. Curtis does a fantastic job for us. Go read his stuff at hawgsports.com. We're going to get over to Danny West now, our main recruiting guy, who also has a lot of good insight on Razorback football. What's up? What's up, Danny? How you doing? Doing pretty good. Getting ready for the weekend, ready for the holidays next week, and uh, just trying to get a little work done. What you got? Well, I thought we'd jump into a little bit of recruiting stuff first off before we uh, cool. jump into this game. Um, what's going on with Arkansas recruiting right now? We know they just had a player, one player, just really moved up in Raheem Sanders, and the recruiting rank is up to 160 overall. The class rank is number 21 nationally. Where do things stand right now with Razorback recruiting? What do you like? What would you like to see more of? Well, first of all, I think, you know, that's really big and well-deserved by Rocket uh, Sanders, big-time athlete. I mean, every clip that he sends me or anybody else sends me of him this fall, I've been like, yeah, man, how is he not top 247, you mm -hmm. know? So it was good to finally see him included in that, especially all the way to 160. Kind of surprised me a little bit, so – uh, good for that. Good for the, you know, twenty-first. I guess you said their uh, ranked class. Now that's good for perception. You know, it's it's good to stay ahead of the teams you you should be ahead of in the mm -hmm. SEC, right? Right. Um, and, and that's exactly where they are. But you got to finish this thing out. Still, uh, you know, I sound like I'm on repeat here, but it comes down to defensive linemen. And, and now we know. I think this was announced since the last time I talked to you on Hog Sports Live here last week. But Cameron Ball has set a new announcement date of December 16th. And what day is that? That's the first day yep. of the early signing period. So he's going to be a uh, – I assume he's going to go ahead and sign uh, on the same day. So that's big news because he was starting to, starting to push it back to where – maybe you thought he was going all the way to February and nobody wants to wait that long, <laughs> especially this year, right? So mm – -hmm. Cameron Ball, you know, for people that don't keep up with recruiting so much, he's big-time defensive tackle out of Atlanta. And the problem with that is Georgia Tech is, is right there with him too. So it's going to come down to those two schools, in my opinion. don't want to speak for him, but I think Arkansas is still in a good spot there. I've still got my crystal ball pick in. Uh, you know, people kind of gave me grief. Well, you lowered your confidence level. I can tell you this. As of today, I – probably going to go ahead and boost it back up yeah, a little you're bit. You're at a three confidence level out of ten, Danny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I took it down from a six. I uh, was at six initially, took it to three. That kind of worried some people. But I think that's been fair. I mean, it's been back and forth. And yeah. You're dealing with a kid from uh, a hometown where, you know, a few miles away, you know, another school is trying to get him. So it's a really tough one, but I'd probably go back up to mid-range confidence for Cameron now. Danny West joining us. If you want to read Danny's stuff, most of it is VIP. And uh, if you like what he does on Out of Bounds, on the Hog Hustle, and the other free stuff that you can catch him on this show as well, uh, then you'll want to sign up for our 50% off deal right now, and you can read all of Danny's content. You'll be glad you did, I promise you. All right, Danny. I want to throw something else at you recruiting-wise if you got a, Let's uh, do it. a second pretty notable uh, 2022 prospect coming in next week. Mm -hmm. Isaac Thompson, he's a safety out of St. Louis, goes to University High School in St. Louis, 6'1", 190. He's a four-star, number 157 in the country. He told me last night that he and his father just kind of want to come get a feel for the city. Obviously, they can't um, have any in-person contact with the coaching staff, so that's kind of a detriment. But at least they can get here, check out facilities, drive around a little bit, get a feel for it. So, Keep that one on the back burner. Isaac Thompson, he's he's actually got seven crystal ball picks made for uh, Michigan, mm -hmm. believe it or not, with the mess they're in. But, you know, it's good that Arkansas can get him down here. 
I wonder, like, if you get them down here, can you just, like, put Sam Pittman on speakerphone and Pittman <laughs> just kind of guides him around, tells him where to go and stuff? Like, I mean, or, it, or, or FaceTime even. I mean, can you do that? Here's my thing. Can you literally drive through the parking lot and Pittman comes out and wave at you? Like, is that against the rule now? That might – yeah, I don't know. Like, what is in person? I don't know. It's a fine line there. Yeah. So Can you get out with a bullhorn and yell across <laughs> across the street? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. they got a lot to figure out. Yeah, yeah. All right, Danny. Well, uh, the game's Saturday. We've been going over yeah. – you know, we've been looking at this LSU roster, and it's just insane, you know, how – the start, you look at the starters, just, you know, one four-star, five-star after another. They've been recruiting, obviously, very well. There's, their total numbers of scholarship players are down. That's impacted a little bit. Losing Joe Brady last year, co-offensive coordinator, who was really the coordinator of that team. And, uh, of course, Dave Aranda is the head coach at Baylor now, was defensive coordinator. They brought in Bo Pelini to replace him. A lot of change, and that's obviously had a big impact on them. And then the unknown factor is – 21 days away from playing a game a good thing or is it a bad thing yeah yeah you can look at that two ways but uh, you know lsu does not handle success very well in my opinion like alabama is just the train that keeps rolling mm-hmm. lsu might sneak up at one one every 10 years or so and then they they slide and i don't know why that is maybe it's the culture there i don't know around the program but um you well, know, this is not the this LSU. is shaping up to be the worst season that they've had in twenty years or so. There, there seems to be no no leadership. Of course, they had a lot of opt outs, mm-hmm. rightfully so, if kids want to do that. But you know, when you think about one hundred thirteenth in total defense, one hundred twenty third in pass defense for a, a program they they like to call themselves DBU. Mm-hmm. Boy, that that sure doesn't do a whole lot to sell that. One hundred second in third down conversions offensively. Like I said, it's just not the LSU we're used to seeing. I like Arkansas. Uh, I like their reset button. You know, they, they've been able to bounce back. Some teams are simply better than Arkansas, and people are fine with that as long as they compete, right? That's right. what we always say. And they do that. They get up off the mat after they take a little bit of a whooping, and they come back. They've got a great reset button, and I would expect nothing short of that again this week. I'm, I'm liking the Hogs. And I'll tell you this, Trey, I'm liking them kind of big in this game. Liking them big, huh? Kind of liking the, kind of liking the Razorbacks big here. How big? Double digits. Double digits. I'll step out there with that. Yeah. All right. Well, Danny, you heard it from Danny West. He's calling a double-digit win for Arkansas. And Sonny did make a good. Uh, I don't know if you heard any of Sonny Ship on here earlier, but you know he I made. Didn't. A, I'm gonna go back and listen. Well, he made a lot of good points just about how. Um, you know, you see a lot of pointing fingers, you know, and looking at each other and like holding your hands sure. up, you know, a lot of a lot of blaming each other. <laughs> We've and seen a little bit of that before. Yeah. We we have, and that's that's been, you know, that's one thing you're talking about. Like there's a, there's certain cues and stuff like with defensive backs looking at them pointing at each yeah. other, holding their that hands up and looking nuts, or looking at defensive linemen with their hands on their hips, you know, these guys are tired, <laughs> you know. There's like certain cues like that you look for and then on the other side when a team is playing well which we've seen with Arkansas this year which is what I you know said over and over again and complained about last year is when you're watching the game on television you want to see red jerseys just flying over the pile you know nobody nobody saying oh he's got it it's too much you know guys jogging up pulling up jogging you know you just don't want to see that and we haven't seen that out of Arkansas this year so we do know and hopefully that'll continue for them that they're given it looks like everything they've got. Yeah. Totally with you, buddy. That's It's been impressive, been fun to watch. Kind of reminds me, you know, people don't like to hear about Houston nut days, but you go back and watch some of those 98, 99 defenses. Mm-hmm. Uh, who would that have been? Keith Burns, maybe? Keith Burns in 98, 99. Um, yeah. Who'd they bring? Was it Dave Womack? Which Kane, his son, Kane Womack, is, uh, is he at – is he at Indiana? He's defensive coordinator at Indiana yep. now. Yep. But right. uh, I believe it was I believe it was Dave Womack after that. And uh, Reggie Herring, which I tried to get, you know, Keith Burns had code red. Uh, mm-hmm. and I tried to get I tried to get everybody to catch on to Code Red Herring when Reggie Herring became defensive <laughs> coordinator. But Herring was the first big name defensive coordinator at Arkansas. He was the first the first guy that wasn't making like a hundred thousand, they had, I think they paid him three hundred thousand dollars. It was the first yeah, big money I remember that. defensive coordinator that Arkansas has ever had. But 
yeah, I mean, get back to being scrappy. You know, if, if you're scrappy, then that's I know you're. All we ask you're for, right? I know you're fighting. That's not all, but that's at least. Sure. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if, if I'm calling you a scrappy defense, that, that to me means maybe they're a little undersized, which Arkansas is. Um, you know, and Pittman, you know, has kind of said, you know, teams are going to run at them because they are, you know, a little bit undersized. But um, if we're calling them scrappy, that means that's an opportunistic defense. It's a team that doesn't that doesn't stop. The team that un- overachieves, and that's that's I'm fine with calling an Arkansas defense scrappy. Absolutely, especially down in the red zone. I, I've liked yeah. seeing that. They make you earn it. A bend but don't break. We love that term too for <laughs> down in yeah. the red zone, don't we? <laughs> yeah. All right, Danny. Appreciate All you, right, man. man. You bet. All right, See that's you. Danny West. Again, Danny's does a great job for us. Most of his stuff is VIP. And, again, you can get that with a 50% off deal right now. And if you're a monthly subscriber, then you want to upgrade to the 50% off deal. And as I mentioned, if you're a monthly subscriber, you're paying at the regular rate, you've already signed up for CBS All Access. You have to have already signed up. You go to subscriptions at the top right. And um, you re-authenticate, and then you'll see under subscriptions if it's available, CBS All Access. So you'll want to do that first, and then you can upgrade to the 50% off uh, annual subscription and still hold on to that deal, which is a $99 annual value for the CBS All Access commercial free. I used it last night. I was watching some stuff last night on CBS All Access, so it's a good deal. All right, we're going to jump over to y'all's questions now. See what y'all got for me. Adam Johnson says, will this be Trey Knox's breakout game with Warren out? He's kind of – he's tweeted some stuff about it. You know, Sam Pittman says it's not an injury. They want him to run better routes in practice. Excuse me, practice better, run better routes in games, all those kinds of things. Um, so, it hasn't been like an injury thing. It's just been guys passing over him. But he said, you know, it's an opportunity for a guy like uh, Tyson Morris for Trey Knox. Casey Rowland says, what's up, Trey Biddy? Not much. We made it through the today's show. I don't think I made any critical errors like I did last time on the uh, preview when I called my man over at uh, R&J Roofing. So I still got their card here. Again, that is an insurance claim. We have hail damage. <laughs> Aaron Wayne Moyer says, hope you're doing well, brother. Do you know the number of players out due to COVID this week? There will be some players out. That's all I can tell you. You know, even if I did know, that's not something that – I'm going to share unless they put it out there on social media. But KJ Jefferson, um, KJ Jefferson was uh, tweeting, you know, that he's he's out, and there are, there are a couple others. I'm sure there are a couple others, a few others. Anthony Jant Tenor says, "Next up, man, Brad Holmes says, can you get your roofer on?" Casey, here we go with the jokes. That, that one's not going to die, is it? Casey Rowland says, I want so badly for Trey Knox to go have a breakout game and go in beast mode for the rest of the season. He deserves it. J.P. Gregory says, just a little bit of the in-state sports. New Van Buren fifth grade youth league team went down to Little Rock this past weekend for a state championship tournament. They played five games two days and won the state championship. Well, congratulations, J.P. Gregory. Jonathan Mosley says, did Trey Knox play last weekend? He did. I don't, I don't believe he was targeted. Nathan Post says, I saw him play one, but that's all I remember. Jim Taylor says, hey, Trey, Jim and Fre- Jim Taylor in Fresno, California, thanks for all you do, Danny and the gang, for all of the out-of-state alumni. I appreciate you send me a mailing address, and I will send you some California pistachios. Okay, I'm going to copy your email right here because I want those pistachios. Ryan D. Summer says, need to start Traylon Smith because he is the better threat to run, Trey Knox. Um, you know, Traylon, I could see he's definitely – I don't want to say pulled even. I mean, Traylon's been outplaying Rakeem. I don't know if Rakeem has been, you know, an injury situation, though. So, But Traylon Smith, I mean, he has an 83-yard touchdown to his resume now. I mean, he deserves more carries for sure. Trey Knox needs to show out now that Devion is out. Our D needs to get stops. Yes. Why is this happening? Justin Eric Cunningham says, call your plumber and see who he thinks will be. Yep. J. Michael Verde says, Trey, what's the difference in sacks allowed compared to last year? Sacks allowed, let's look at it. Sacks allowed compared to last year, you know it's better. Southeast Conference and sacks allowed. Where are you at? There we go. Sacks allowed this year, Arkansas has given up an SEC worst 23, 3.29 per game. And last year, 
Last year they made a lot of improvement, actually, because they were only give up 19 on the whole year, 1.58 per game. So definitely giving up fewer sacks. Um, the year before that they were not very good. They were 11th. So that's a bit surprising. Um, but Arkansas, I don't know that that's all against the offensive line necessarily because Felipe does – there's one critique I would have with Felipe – is that he holds the ball too long. I think everybody says that. And then the one time where you, like, hold it a little bit longer on that pass to Traylon Burks that was wide open down the sideline last weekend, you wanted to hold it just a little bit longer that time, and he got rid of it too quick. Isn't that how it goes? But, um, you know, Arkansas is is last in the SEC, giving up 23 sacks per game this year. J.P. Gregory says, with there being three games left, do you think they'll start dipping into the freshmen who are also redshirting this year for on effect for us? They're not really worried at all about redshirting because everybody gets a year back, so they haven't even made a thing of it. I mean, players, they've been playing young guys in special teams all year. Galen Brown says, so proud of Franks and the team. He has played smart. What about Jefferson? Why is he not playing? Uh, Jefferson... I would assume has either COVID or contact tracing, but he's he tweet made, made pretty public on social media that he's not practicing this week. Garrett Haley says, "Don't call it the roofer's tray." Here we go. Clyde Randall Williams says, "Those defensive numbers sound like it's attributed to coaching." I, I think so. I think part of it is now again they replaced a ton of players from last year, a ton of players, but they still are really highly regarded players. Clyde Randall Williams says, yeah, we just read that. Jeremy Dick says, curb stomp. I like the idea of a curb stomp of those Tigers. I want so much of that boot back. Les Reisner says, LSU passing defense skewed by Mississippi State. That's a good point, Les. It's a good point. In that Mississippi State game, LSU's pass defense gave up like, what, 640-something yards. It was a, it was a record. I mean, remember, LSU quarterback's going to win the Heisman. LSU vaults up to number 16 in the country. L- or, I'm saying LSU, MSU. Mississippi State quarterback wins the Heisman. Mississippi State vaults to number 16 in the country. Mississippi State, 17-and-a-half point favorite over Arkansas. Going to win seven games minimum this year. Arkansas, anybody who predicted Arkansas to beat Mississippi State, Arkansas is the most delusional fan base in the SEC. That's what they said to you. Feels like Mississippi State's most delusional fan base in the SEC. Norman Hunt says Arkansas needs first downs, first downs, first downs. That's the only weakness our defense has, the inability to keep the defense off the field. By midway through the third quarter, they would be wore out. Anybody would be. They got to get off on on third down. That's something that's been a big focus for them this week, both offense and defense. You know, I thought Sam Pittman made a good point too, because you know we talked about coronavirus, who might be missing and stuff, and you know, is it a you know is it a starter and stuff? It's not a starter, yada yada, all those things. But it's also scout team guys. When you lose a scout team guy, you know that's your that's the guy giving you the look all week. And if you lose a if you lose a guy that's you know not a scout team player, then you got to move a scout team player up. So it impacts the scout team and it impacts the looks. And Sam Pittman kind of brought that up too. You know, against Georgia, they were, got really good looks from their scout team, and it's just kind of it's been depleted here and there since then. Stephen Shoup says, "Go Hogs! Beat LSU 31-21. Hogs win 38-31, says Norman Hunt. Steven Shoup says we had to play smart against LSU this Saturday. And Shoup says we have to stop the run and pass game against LSU. Those are a lot of truths. Andrew Sawyer says the boot is coming home. Justin Eric Cunningham says your roofer knows a heck of a lot about LSU. Andrew Sawyer says, Trey, is there a special on this month? Yep, 50% off today. And today, Justin Eric Cunningham says, in your opinion, Trey, are we going to pound them with passion? There's another gaffe by Trey Biddy, pound with passion. Matt Bounce says they run the same scheme they did against Mississippi State. LSU's freshman quarterback will struggle. I predict two interceptions. Catalan will have both. David Stauffer says, I want to know from Curtis where he thinks our team stands on a national level. I think they were picked middle of the pack. What were they, six in the SEC preseason pick? They're going to have to prove themselves this year. I mean, they got so many guys they had to replace. By the way, Desi Seals, second team all SEC. I don't think we mentioned that. But Desi Seals today was named second team all SEC. So, congratulations to Desi. 
nothing against Dazzy. I don't know that he's going to end up being second team all SEC. Nothing against him. I mean, I just think there's there's a lot of players for Arkansas. I like Desi off the bench personally, but we'll see. Maybe he starts, and I would be fine with that. I mean, he's definitely one of the leaders of the team. Steven Shoops is very active today. Can't wait for basketball season. Justin Eric Cunningham says we go along the trend, then we win this game, lose to Missouri, and beat Bammer. I'd be fine with that. They got a good chance of beating both of the next two. Excuse me. A little bit of a belch. <laughs> I am hitting the, the cutoff time here. I'm beyond the cutoff time. All right, let me see if we got any other good questions here. A lot of comments. Traylon Smith going to start now, says Casey French Fulton. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, I think you gotta you got to have two backs in the SEC. I mean, LSU is going to throw two backs at you. Michael Polk says, who do you think comes back next year? I think there are a lot of possibilities. I think Blake Kern is a possibility. I don't know that Myron Cunningham is or isn't. Probably not. I could see him moving on. I think Felipe probably move on. Rakeem's probably going to move on. Devion Warren could come back, absolutely. I think Jonathan Marshall moves on. I think Hayden Henry could possibly come back. Grant Morgan could possibly come back. Is Bumper Pool 100%? I don't think Bumper Pool or Grant Morgan is 100%. Marcus Brown says Hogs 41, LSU 14. Jerry Jack's over there. I'm not going to go get him. <laughs> Stouffer. I would have been saying Stouffer. David Stouffer, it's Stouffer. Okay. All right, everybody. We did it. We primed it up for you. Now it's time for some paint. We didn't come to paint. All right, everybody. I want to thank Sonny Ship for coming and joining us from Go 24-7. If you're an LSU fan, go check those guys out if you haven't done already. They found out a lot of content, a lot of great insight from that team over there. We've got a lot of great teams over at 24-7 on all of our team sites. Uh, thanks to Danny West for providing the recruiting insight that we all – covet and if you want to read more of Danny be sure to sign up for our 50% off deal also Curtis Wilkerson for bringing his hoops insight as well as information on the LSU defense and everything else that he brings and again with Curtis we got basketball season starting up I know I've been teasing some surprises but we got some stuff coming up with Curtis that I think you're really going to like all right everybody we did it. Appreciate your questions. Thanks to our members. Again, if you haven't signed up, 50% off right now ends tonight, Thursday night. What is today? The 19th, 11, 19, 20, Thursday night, 10.59 p.m. This deal is off the table. 50% off. Breaks down to 15 cents a day, $1.03 a week, four forty eight dollars a month. It's a heck of a deal at Hogsports. If you ever wonder, how can we support these guys? We like the free content. We like the podcast. We like drive time sports. All of those things. Then get something great at it. Get the best stuff at it. Get our VIP service. Like, this stuff is good, but you got to see what we have behind the curtain, and it's 50% off right now. You can also sign up for $1 for your first month if you choose to go that route. And if you're a subscriber and you're listening, you're paying monthly, then you can upgrade right now for 50% off. And if you're paying a regular price, then you can get, still get your CBS All Access for free and upgrade to this 50% off deal. So it doesn't get much better than that. It's a $99 value, and you're getting $53.70 off of your subscription. So over $150 you're getting back on this deal. Plus you get all the great service that you would normally expect that you've been paying for at Hog Sports. So if you're a monthly subscriber, upgrade. This is a no-brainer. All right, we'll probably have some Black Friday stuff coming up for you guys also, you know, next week. We'll probably have some of that stuff. So look out for that. But this is a great deal, 50% off. All right, everybody. We did it. That's your primer. This has been Trey Video with Hogsports.com. We'll see you for the walk and talk after the game.